Well, there's a new presidential poll out this morning that was done after we heard about Donald Trump's making sexually charged comments on tape. This Washington Post ABC News poll shows Hillary Clinton with a four point lead over Trump amongst likely voters. That is still, though, within the margin of error. This poll was conducted on Thursday. Errol Barnett brings us more from the campaign trail. She's getting pumped up for Wednesday night. Donald Trump was delivering a speech on opioid abuse in New Hampshire Saturday when he veered into a new line of attack on Hillary Clinton, suggesting they take drug tests before the next debate. At the beginning of her last debate, she was all pumped up at the beginning. And at the end, it was like, oh, take me down. She could barely reach her car. So I think we should take a drug test. Trump continues to blame the media for trying to influence the election. The election is being rigged by corrupt media pushing completely false allegations and outright lies in an effort to elect her president. In the past week, at least six women have stepped forward claiming to have been sexually assaulted by Trump. Trump denies any wrongdoing. In just about all cases, it's nonsense. It's false. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton continues to be dogged by document dumps from WikiLeaks. The group published more emails Friday claiming they'd been hacked from Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta. One round of emails shows campaign staffers urged Bill Clinton to cancel a speech he planned to give to Morgan Stanley executives. Staffers were concerned the Clintons might appear too cozy with Wall Street. And you can watch the next presidential debate right here on Wednesday night on WCCO. Our coverage begins at 8. One of the topics sure to come up is Obamacare. This week, Governor Mark Dayton made national headlines when he said the Affordable Care Act is no longer affordable. Donald Trump even tweeted about Dayton's observation, Trump saying, I've been saying this for years. Earlier this week, I profiled a Minnesota farm family whose premiums will go up to $40,000 a year in 2017 for their family of four, and that's with a $13,000 deductible. On Friday, there were dueling press conferences the at the Capitol with Minnesota legislators on how to deal with the crisis. With Joining us to talk about Minshore and the 2016 election, Speaker of the Minnesota House, Kurt Dow. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, Esme. All right, let me ask you, uh, Minshore, you have long voiced your opposition to this proposal. It's what we have now. What needs to be done about this crisis? Well, it is a real crisis. And while the governor came out this week and said the Affordable Care Act is no longer affordable, and that seemed incredibly obvious to most Minnesotans, it actually was a big step because I think now it means we can, uh, now that they admit there's a problem, we can actually work towards fixing it. We need to find a way to get more uh, plans uh, so there's more choice for Minnesotans and also figure out how to get the, the, the price back down to where it was. Uh, uh, this is a, a real crisis for Minnesota families. In fact, on January 1st, 130,000 Minnesotans are going to be without health insurance coverage in the state of Minnesota because of Obamacare. So and it's a real crisis. where are you getting that estimate? Well, there's 150,000 people that currently have plans uh, that are being canceled. So Blue Cross Blue Shield was one of the providers that's pulling out of the individual marketplace. Those folks are going to need to go to another plan. Uh, the Commerce Department actually approved a plan which capped enrollment for the other plans um, at about 20,000. So we're going to try to to fit uh, 150,000 into, into 20,000 slots. All right, and I want to get to that in just a bit, but let me ask you about your proposal that you put out there Friday. It talked about uh, cutting the Minshore tax or premiums uh, by half to save families $22 million over the next three years and using $35 million in leftover funds from a, a defunct fund. Governor Dayton says to roll back the premiums to what they were this year is $580 million. How is this possibly going to help people enough? This is going to leave some money in Minnesotans' pockets, but what we need to do is, is move back towards what we had before with our uh, MSHA system, which uh, was a, a high-risk pool. Um, the state of Alaska has done something similar to that. I think we have to look at that. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll say one thing. Obamacare is the problem that's creating all of this, and I can assure you that, that moving further into Obamacare is not the solution, and that's the only thing that Democrats uh, have really proposed doing. But, but your temporary fix is not going to provide enough relief for these people. This is really 
really just one idea and one step, uh, but we need to, to, to take serious action. We have to do that together. Uh, Democrats have proposed kind of capping the amount of money that would come out of someone's pocket. Um, they're proposing that that would be about $75 million. Um, their, their proposal does nothing for the 130,000 Minnesotans that will be without health insurance on January 1st. The House Democrats' plan literally will leave 130,000 Minnesotans without coverage. All right, well, I want to ask about the, the House Democrats' plan, but, but let's talk also about the disparity in terms of region, county, area. Southeast Minnesota, Rochester only has one provider. Uh, in Goodhue County, it's two providers. Yeah. Uh, if the, the Goodhue family that I profiled moved to Dakota County, their premiums would be a thousand dollars less a month. Right. I mean, what is going on and does that need to be corrected? Well, it's a serious problem. The answer is we need more plans offering more coverage and, and frankly uh, that, that sort of competition is, is what will give people not only more choices but it'll keep the costs down. Um, I understand that because we have uh, health care providers in those areas of the state that are somewhat more expensive, uh, you, you get rising okay. costs. But, but Obamacare is the problem. It's, li it's really limited the choices in the marketplace. All right. And when do they need a fix? The governor says that a special session has to happen after the election. Well, I said last Friday, we cannot wait even another minute to start talking about this. Uh, if, if, if we tell Minnesota, I mean, imagine telling this family uh, down in Red Wing that we need to put their lives on hold and their worry and their stress on hold for a month while we conduct an election. No, we, we need to start working together now to find solutions. All right. And I want to ask you real quickly about the presidential race. You were amongst the Republicans, many Republicans, who asked Donald Trump to step aside after the publication of that tape. Yet after the debate, uh, this last debate, Trump, you, you wrote on Twitter, Trump exceeded my expectations tonight. Dems are underestimating public mistrust and dislike for Hillary. Which is it? I mean, well, where are you here? You know, I, I have been uh, just as frustrated with everyone on some of the things that Trump says. Uh, you know, obviously, I don't like the reality TV aspect of him, but I think people need to pay attention to the fact that a candidate like Donald Trump, um, and for that matter, Bernie Sanders, did so well this election cycle. People are frustrated with politics as usual. But you and still I think he should step aside. You know, I think he... <laughs> I think he should have, but but unfortunately, he's going to run, and and we cannot let Hillary Clinton become president Will of the United States. Will you be voting States. for him? People in this country do not trust Hillary Clinton to keep their families safe, to keep our country safe, and to create the jobs that we frankly Will need. Will you be voting for him? Uh, you know, I haven't made that decision yet, um, but I, I cannot vote for Hillary Clinton. Okay. All right. Well, Speaker Doubt, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you.